Hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> <laughs> the shed um, you might notice it's sitting on some pallets there and there's no floor underneath it um, I'm trying to remedy uh, some of the issues that I caused myself when I first set up the shed just from my own ignorance um, here is the, the platform that I built for the shed which at the time I thought was fantastic but there's a couple issues with it that I have since learned um, so this is uh, let's see 10 10 feet by 12 feet, or it's actually slightly bigger than that, which is my first mistake. Um, the shed is a 10 by 12 shed. And what I've learned since is you really don't want the platform, the base, to be any bigger than the shed. You can see just from kind of the, the wear that uh, the shed would stop, would have stopped right about back here. So you don't really want this, this piece here because that just gives a spot for the water to hit when it rains or even just running down the side walls. <laughs> and hitting hitting the platform here and that gives it a place to go underneath so what i've learned is that you really only want this base to be just as big if not a slight a, a, just a tad smaller than the base of the shed so i'm going to rectify that um, my joists run this direction and because of that my plywood should have run the other way you can see my plywood is long this way um, it should have been long this way across those joists. So I'm gonna fix that. This plywood, I just happen to have it left over from our house. It's half inch, probably slightly less than half inch. And I've now got three quarter inch plywood. So I'm gonna have thicker plywood. I'm gonna orient it the right direction. And I'm gonna shrink this whole base by, you know, inch, inch and a half around the whole, I've screwed it together. So I'm actually just gonna unscrew it and chop some off and shrink it. Um, the boards under here should be fine but this plywood is kind of shot from the water. So because the plywood was laid in the wrong direction, we got some, some sagging and that made the, the edges quite bad. And it was hard to fill them with any kind of sealant like caulking or anything because the gaps just got too big from the, from the sagging. So we were constantly getting water in here every time it would rain. And of course pests now, even when I fix this, it's not gonna be pest proof like mice. We got some mice in here. Um, so I'll still have to deal with mice and, and you know, I'll have to capture them or But um, I should be able to make it pretty waterproof, which it wasn't so I think we can rectify that um, I think we're also going to move this whole setup uh, Up around behind the mountain over there up where that pop-up tent is Because I want to clear this space. I think we're gonna build uh, just standard construction a new shed here a wood shed, a shed made out of wood, um, as storage, um, and a future shop or, or some other use. So that's the plan. Um, I didn't get to show the move of this. It wasn't real pretty, but we got it moved. It's not super, uh, sturdy when you take it up off the base, but, uh, with five of us, we got it slid onto some pallets. Um, so now I can work on the floor and relocate. So that's what we're going to do. Here we are now with all the plywood plied off. You can see, so I've got the corner piers, I think those are called deck blocks, right? Where the, the two by material can sit right into a notch. But I also use cinder blocks in a couple of places. And what I've also learned about this is, so I chose to put cinder blocks at intervals, you know, along this, which I thought would be fine. But what that means is, if there's a joist here, for example, this joist is 10 feet long, this joist is 10 feet long, and it's only supported at the end. So that's not the best setup, I don't think. So after what I've been reading, I think when I relocate this, um, again, this this floor is, this, this subfloor, these joists, it's all reusable, which I thought it would be. So that's good news. So I'm gonna use it the way it is. Like I said, I'm gonna shorten it up slightly just so that the platform isn't actually bigger than the shed itself. I want it to be right up to the edge, if not a little short even, of the shed itself, just to stop, get, not give water a spot to pool and run under. But I'm also, as I do this, instead of going with this kind of pure foundation um, with some cinder blocks, I think I'm gonna go with a skid foundation, which would be four by four treated uh, beams just laying on the ground, or 
Actually, I can put them on, you know, concrete pads, just, you know, pavers, basically, just to keep them off, off the dirt, but they'll be treated. Um, and really, if you do, let's say one, you know, it doesn't have to come to the very edge. The edge can hang off maybe 16 inches or so, but there'd be one, then one down the center, then one on that far side. So with three skids, I can get this whole subfloor off of the ground, completely supported, unlike it is now. Like, for example, these joists are unsupported. So that'll be much better. So I've, it's unfortunate that I'm having to kind of redo all this, but I've learned something. So um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a skid foundation uh, when I relocate here. But the good news is all this is reusable. If I weren't going to shrink it, I'd be able to use it just like this and just pick it up and move it. But I am going to actually shrink it slightly. So I'm going to kind of take this all apart and trim some of these pieces to make it the size that I want. So that'll be next. All right, so here's our new site for our shed. And as you can see, I've gone to a skid foundation. Um, don't mind the mess in the back. That's just our little junk pile. <laughs> um, but this is roughly leveled. The ground is roughly leveled. The ground doesn't have to be perfectly level. What has to be level are those skids from front to back and kind of between each other from side to side uh, with each other. So they're each set on some concrete pavers just to get them up a little bit off the ground and make it easier to level them a little bit. I can just kind of work those pavers up or down if I need to level them a little bit. These skids are four by four treated lumber. Um, they are 12 feet long, so it will cover the entire depth or support the entire depth of the shed. And I've got them spaced about four feet apart, which makes about eight feet. So the shed is 10 feet wide. That subfloor will actually stick about a foot off of each side, but that's okay. Um, so I think we're about ready to put our subfloor on top of these skids. That's the next step. Okay, so here we are with the joist system all reassembled. I'm in my new location. It's sitting on top of skids, treated four by fours on top of concrete pads. And it is slightly smaller than it was before, as I said, it's gonna be uh, just the size of the base of the shed, if not just slightly smaller, so that there's nowhere for water to sit to run underneath the, the bottom of the shed. And just wanted to point out, there's another, so I talked about a few things I did wrong the first time. I laid my plywood in the wrong direction. I laid it kind of with the joists, which is a mistake. So now you can see I'm gonna lay it across the joists, which is the right way to do it. Uh, another thing I didn't do is add, you can see, so obviously the joists only run this way, so each piece of plywood at its edge is somewhat unsupported underneath the edge of it, right? So I'm gonna add blocking this time around. So I'm gonna cut little blocks to fit in between there, also two by six, the same as the, as the joists, to support the edges of the plywood pieces. So I should have a piece, a half a piece, a piece, a half a piece and then half wide full piece half piece because um, this is 10 feet so i've got five sheets of plywood which should do the job they're also three quarter inch plywood this time around last time they were half inch so i think i'm correcting mistakes that i made before so that's what i need to do to finish up this floor put the blocking in and tack this uh plywood down the structure is pretty square within about a half an inch and actually doing the plywood should make that even better as I kind of line it up with the edges. So I think we're ready to uh, cut the blocking, put it in, and then attach the plywood. And then all that's left is to get the shed over here and set it on top. Okay, so here we are with all the blocking installed. As you can see now, every piece of plywood will be supported on all edges, which it wasn't in my past example and I did get some some bowing so full sheet here half sheet behind it full sheet back there half sheet in front of it and then half of a sheet over here kind of full and half but half wide so four feet four feet two feet it's ten feet wide so now we should be solid and a place for everything to sit on so it's just putting the plywood on now and then we're ready to put the shed back so here we are with the plywood again. So we've got our floor back. Uh, I've got a couple more places to screw it down, but 
I'm almost ready to have my crew to come and move the uh, shed with me. It is over there. It's one of those metal sheds. It's not super sturdy when you don't have it on a base, so we gotta be kind of careful with it as we try to carry it all the way over to here and set it on this base. Wish us luck. So here's the final product, all sealed. Um, I forgot to say a huge thank you to some of our neighbors that helped us make this happen, helped us get this shit over here. Uh, Bill and Yvonne from the Upside of Downsizing, which you see a lot of if you watch any of our videos. Um, and some other neighbors, our neighbor across the wash, Doug, and uh, Jason from in town, and um, Taylor and Melissa also from in town, who are trying to find their own spot to do something similar. So good luck to them. But thanks to all of them, we couldn't have moved this without them. Here it is in place. Um, it was tough. You know, it, it bends a lot and everything. So it was tough to get it right on the spot I wanted. It's still not perfect. Um, the, the base, the floor is kind of the exact size of the, of the shed, but it moves around so much. It was really hard to put down uh, the sealant on the edge of the, the floor and get the shed down right on top of it. It was just hard to do um, just physically to get it in the right place. So it's still not exactly as good as I want it, but I've got them all covered up pretty good with sealant and I can actually hit it again if I want. Some of them are kind of right to the edge and some of them are, are just off slightly, maybe a quarter inch. But uh, I think I've got enough sealant on there to hopefully keep all the water out. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I just kind of smeared it with my finger of the spots where it didn't land right on the sealant. Here's one side where I think it did kind of land right on the edge. So hopefully that made a nice seal. Um, you really won't know until some water comes, which won't be too long now. So cross your fingers. Uh, what I do know is the floor is a lot better floor. So um, if we keep the water out of there, that's going to last for a long time. This floor would probably outlast this shed easily if it doesn't get water inside. So it's clear that it's a lot flatter, you know, not, not bowed. It's, it's got nice you know, the floor comes right down to the wood in most places. And I guess I'll throw a couple screws in here as well, just to tighten it down a little bit, but it looks like we're pretty close. So that should be a wrap for this one. Thanks for watching. Come back if you want to see more. Uh, if you like what you see, share it with a friend and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more. We'll talk to you later. So here's the shed again in its new location. Same shed, different floor, different spot. I think that's done for now. Got the rain barrels back in place. Um, thanks again to all our neighbors and friends who helped us get it over here. And next project is to build a shed out of wood on a similar floor. It's just gonna be bigger and hold some more stuff and give us a little more space to protect some things from the weather and the rain. We'll get to that next.